Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about the Unify 24 Port Pro PoE switch right here, Gen 2. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a Hire Us button up at the top. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, there are affiliate links down below for products and services we talk about on this channel. And today, we're talking about the Gen 2 Unify PoE Pro 24 port switch with two 10 gig ports over here, which I have one of the little dust caps out of it. So I opened it up first. We've already updated firmware, made sure it worked, etc. I do those things. And I wanted to start talking about the physical layer here. So let's talk it, let's take it apart, which I did, and uh, talk about the components inside of here. So we have a couple heavy gauge cables here, I noticed, to facilitate the PoE. Uh, we have this connector here. Now I don't or I should say I have not spent a lot of time on this, but what this is, is a connector if you have the power supply, rack mountable power supply system for Unify. This allows you to plug them in. So instead of using the onboard power supply, I believe it creates a redundancy in the power supplies. It's like I said, not something I've a lot, I spent a lot of time researching, but novel that they've added that. It's uh, if you have a whole ubiquity stack and you get their uh, USPS part, that would be part of it as well. We'll talk about that more when we'll look at that product uh, when we get to the software part. We have one large heat sink here. This should be for the switching heat sink, but the power supply is interesting in this. Now, they're right about it being quiet design, and this right here, we've got a heat sink here, but what this is is kind of interesting take the lid and show you. These, to help dissipate, this brings the heat out of those chips and dissipates it into the metal body. So we are dissipating heat using the uh, casing as a giant heat sink. That's pretty cool. We've got these two fans in the front. And like I said, this is quiet. We'll, we'll have it on and uh, do a sound check on that. Ports. So we have the same that we have on the Gen 2 uh, series, the little display that's a touchscreen so we can get in basic information on there. Uh, we have 24 ports and it's interesting because they're not all PoE plus. Some are PoE plus, the other ones are PoE plus plus. So you kind of have a mix on here and I'll break that down in the software as well. But it, it's probably a little bit small to see in the video, but the uh, ports over here, they're marked uh, clearly plus, 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 plus. So this little group of them right here are PoE plus plus. And then we have the 10 gig, and I, like I said, I have one of the dust covers out. Now, the SFP plus 10 gig, I, minor thing that I really uh, wish they did on all their switches, and it's just, it's a dust cover, so I'm, I know these are aftermarket, you could find these. These dust covers are flat, so they don't stick out. And that's fine, because I can get my fingernail under them. And I actually like it because we have dust covers that are jammed in from when the switches get set like this. So I kind of like these flat plastic ones better, but there's gonna be someone who probably doesn't like them because, well, they're flat plastic and are harder to get out. But uh, it was easy enough to take it apart, uh, just a few screws held, holding it in on the sides here. Uh, it does come with rack ears and things like that, so not a big deal. Um, but inside, it looks nice, looks clean inside. Uh, big power supply keeps it nice and quiet. All right. Let's go ahead and put it back together so we can turn it on. And it's a little tricky when you're putting it together because those little rubber pads, the thermal transfer pads, I don't know if they're rubber, whatever material they're made out of, the thermal transfer pads, when you slide the switch apart, it can be a little bit difficult when you're sliding it because it's like, it, it gets a, not really stuck on them, but they uh, obviously they're, they're quite kind of sticky to do their job to uh, make good contact. So uh, other than that, we'll get this assembled and we'll turn it on and start talking about the details. One other comment I'll make is this does come with the rack gears, of course, so you can rack mount it. But I like the packaging they're using now for all the little screws and the rack, and the rack nuts that they have in here. So you got rack nuts, some screws to mount them in there, and uh, just nice packaging. And if you were going to use this and just set it on a desktop, you've got some sticky feet to put on there. Like the other Gen 2 switches, it has a cool little boot animation on this display. And we'll fast forward through this little boot process. Once booted, the display is much the same as it was on the previous one. So we'll go here. You can see which Ethernet ports are plugged in. You can look at the speed, system, memory, temperature, PoE wattage, and you slide through these and it's got nice up downs settings for changing the brightness. It's it's really something I'm gonna say is kind of handy. It tells you what the IP address is, what the uptime is, hardware, US Pro 24, 
and a softer version it's on. I actually really like these being on here. I mean, you should know what's in your stack, but when you have a large stack of them and you wanna just look at things really quick, it is nice the fact that it has this. If you touch the middle, it goes back out. In previous videos, I said I didn't have a way to measure the ambient sound. And thank you, Jason, who uh, sent this and mailed it over to our studio here. Very happy we have the ability. I am substantially louder in terms of decibels uh, than this, but uh, true to their word, like they said with at Unify, this is a very quiet. And I'm seeing like 43, I think that's, I don't know that it's even picking that up. I think it's picking up the ambient uh, where the sound floor is in the studio. Uh, this thing is is absolutely quiet. Now, someone's going, put it under load, put it under load. Yes, I know under load, it's going to get noisier. I am going to try to figure out, I got next time we're doing one of our large setups, um, I'm going to plug everything in here and try to put it under a heavier load to see what it does. I just don't have the ability to do that right now. It's gonna be in the future when we're doing some testing with it because this is gonna go in here for our lab. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the software specs and the details on this. So here's their list of Gen 2 switches. Like one we're looking at right now is the USW Pro 24 PoE Gen 2, 450 watt. So here's the, some of the specs and it's got a 60 watt 802.3 BT and that supports 1724, that's your PoE++ and ports one through 16 are just 803 AFAT. And then the two gig to two 10 gig SFP plus ports that are right here. And a list price of $699 is their MSRP for this, $379 for here. Now, the previous one I had mentioned, I purchased. This one was provided as a review unit that we get to keep from Unify. So we did not pay, uh, just full disclosure here, we did not pay the full price for it, but frequently you can find these on discounts. If you can find them, and I say that because uh, we, we ordered them and we have more clients asking about them and they're apparently some scarcity at the moment of this video when I'm recording it. So it's February, 2020. They seem to be a little bit slower to get that could change at any time. I'm assuming they're just ramping up stock and because it's a new po new product, uh, they take longer before they really fill the market uh, and get them available to people, but they are coming out with them. So other than that, the one other thing I'll mention, and I'm just not sure about this, and here's all the other stuff. I'll leave links to this. It's not hard to find on our website, but it's something that a few people commented on that I don't have an answer for. It does say in a future release, they will offer, and I believe it's up here at the top, layer three switching capabilities, but they're kind of vague on that. I will call them out on, uh, it, does it support, you know, inner VLAN routing? I've seen someone comment before that it can be done, but it's not supported in the UI yet. Uh, so I don't have much information or I'm going to dive into that until it's officially supported because my understanding, it doesn't survive reboots. Like there's ways you can go into the system. I've been told by people, I've seen this in forums. It's not something that I would say use in production at all because until it's officially supported by them, it's not something you should use in production. Now, in terms of how it looks inside the Unify controller, it looks like any other of their switches. I didn't see anything other than the fact that just like the other Gen 2s, you have the ability to also uh, change some settings on the little screen, like the brightness. And there's the option to synchronize all the screens together if you're using a series of Gen 2s. The software is pretty much the same as the other Unify controller. Uh, it has the standard information, board revision, things like that. It does have the fan level displayed in here and the current temperature that the switch is running at. So those are features that are in here. Uplink activity, where it's uplinked to, any downlinks if there's other switches behind it, client lists, and the ability to configure the ports. And as you can see, they're clearly labeled in here. It just says PoE+, Plus, but when you plug something in, I plugged in a Unify Nano, it tells you how many watts it's using. And these ports are clearly labeled just like they are on the front of the switch, PoE++ Plus Plus, versus these ones just being PoE+. Plus. But it's easy enough to go in, name things, change the settings. Uh, of course, LLDP is supported in here, spanning tree, uh, topology change notification, and egress rate limiting is supported inside of here. So like I said, pretty much the standard suite of features that you get with the Unify controller with the majority of all their switches. We have under general, we called it uh, shiny new gen two. Uh, we name them as they come out of the box, whatever name gets stuck which is why the other one says 10G SFP, yo. And uh, the using DHCP, 
managed services, uh, all the other features, like I said, force provision, forget this device, all the same things. I didn't find anything particularly interesting in here that was different than any of the other systems. It does have uh, terminal support and a stats spot right here. So nothing, nothing really uh, groundbreaking in terms of that when I looked in the software of it. But I do like these switches. I, I think they're pretty slick. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the USP RPS power redundancy. I'm not sure, and I did not ask Ubiquiti specifically about this, but their general policy is they ask us with the early access things not to talk about them. Well, I'm perfectly fine with adhering to that. Where I am at a quandary of is the USP RPS power redundancy that is talked about on the box of a released product is not a released product yet. So I can't really talk much about it, but I wanted to mention it. Um, and for those of you that agree to terms and conditions of not talking about uh, and posting videos or whatever about the uh, early access stuff, you can find more about it. But I will mention it's what that connector is for on the back, publicly disclosed on the public side of their site, and I'm not going to switch over to it. So that's why I, I wasn't really sure how to um, address that. I always respect the, uh, you know, these, I, I work with these companies and respect their terms and conditions if they say not to do it. I'm not afraid to call companies out when they do something that is confusing. And I've talked about like data collection before, but I will mention at least in this, um, I am confused as to how to talk about a feature that is talked about on these as a feature of the Gen 2 switches, but it's also in the early access thing. Maybe someone from Ubiquity will uh, send me a notice about that uh, for maybe a clarification. Um, they have been kind enough to, like I said, to send this to me for as a demo unit. I get to keep it. I'm excited about that. So we'll actually be uh, moving it over to our lab rack here uh, and doing some testing or may move it to the back. We haven't decided where it's going to end up living, but I'm going to test it over time uh, for things like this. And for those of you that have seen before on my channel, we do some larger Ubiquiti installs. Therefore, I want to load this up with a whole lot of things and it'll be some future videos on our next project when we have something to plug into it uh, and get that all set up. But my overall on this, I, I do like the Switch. I think it's a nice product. I feel as though it's well-built, well-designed. And my overall feeling on all the Ubiquiti Switches has been pretty positive. Uh, for as many as we have out in the field, we've seen really, really low failure rates. I'm hoping that continues with the uh, Gen 2 series. Because there's some people that pointed out some of the other earlier model ones, like the 8-port. I can't remember how many watts it was, but one of the 8-port ones. We have one at the in, the, in our office here, and that one does run hot. Uh, and that's one of the reasons they, with these Gen 2s, they focused on the cooling. But outside of running hot, provided you have an adequately, adequately cool place that these are installed, we haven't really had problems with them. Uh, and when they run hot, we have seen weird issues with them. So it is, cooling is obviously important, but I think that goes really for any networking hardware or computers. When they start having to run the fans full tilt to cool off because they're in too hot of a room, uh, this is a problem for really any electronics. So uh, cooling is, is critically important. And uh, with this Gen 2 and having the way the heat dissipates through the metal uh, case, and it's a pretty heavy amount of metal here, so it's going to, it should, I'm guessing, I'm not a physics engineer here, I'm guessing it's going to spread the heat fairly evenly across here to help dissipate it, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, but it's been running for a little while, it, it, it's not running much load, and as you can tell, it's still really quiet, and it's still, even with the decibel meter, right up against the back of it, I'm only hitting like 45 on this. So I'm not gonna say that it's much of a loud switch. So they are true to the word on it being quiet. Uh, it seems like another good performer from Unify. It, I really, you know, one of the big advantages of Unify is that management platform, the Unify controller software, uh, which of course works wonderful with this and all their products tied together. Uh, so all that, all that being said, I'm positive on the product. I do like it. I would give it my recommendation, uh, but there's going to be some people who think it's a little bit pricey. And yeah, it would be nice if they lowered the price a little because $699. Uh, for only two 10 gig ports. I'd love to have seen four 10 gig ports on there. That would have been really great. But having PoE plus and PoE plus plus on uh, a lot of the ports, that is a big bonus there. So you gotta, you gotta weigh it all out there. More 10 gig ports, I definitely would love. I'd love actually some 10 gig RG45s on there as well, but those do, any switches that have those, uh, it definitely steps the price up a little bit more. But yeah, that's the trade-offs and that's where we're at. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. 
you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.